Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hank Steinbrecher, and I'm very honored to be serving as the president of the College of DuPage Foundation. We're here tonight on this beautiful, crisp Chicago evening to pay homage to a great American, a great American jurist who happens to be from our own, our own uh, DuPage County, the Honorable William J. Bauer, the esteemed federal judge on the Seventh Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. Thank you all for coming to celebrate with us tonight at the College of DuPage. And before Dr. I mean, Dr. Bruder and Judge Bauer leads us into the courtroom, let's take a moment in front of this hollowed beam, a moment to remember and to reflect on how fortunate we are as Americans to be able to live in the land of the free, in the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Boy, that brings tears to your eyes every time you hear it. May I ask uh, our good Judge Bauer and our president, our fearless president, Dr. Brudick, to lead us into the new courtroom, the Judge Bauer courtroom. Before I begin, please allow me a moment to introduce to you some of the College of DuPage Foundation board members who are with us tonight. Carla Burkett, Kurt Dillard, Richard Felice, Ken Flory, Rusham Gohl, Joan Morrissey, Steve Ruffalo, and Bob Schillestrom. Also here tonight is our new Executive Director of the College of DuPage Foundation and the Vice President of Development for the College of DuPage, Ms. Catherine Brode. Welcome to the college. <laughs> May I ask to come to the podium, David Carlin, the President of the College of DuPage Board of Trustees. It's my uh, pleasure as chairman of the College of DuPage Board of Trustees to welcome all of you here. Uh, integrity, civility, fair and just legal solutions. These words describe Judge William J. Bauer. On behalf of the College of DuPage and the Board of Trustees, thank you, Judge Bauer, for your outstanding contributions and dedicated service to the legal community and for being a pillar of justice and integrity. It's an honor tonight for all of us to be in your presence in a building that's named after you. This room will be utilized to teach future generations of students across the justice spectrum. This building was built with funds from a referendum that was approved over 10 years ago. It was a project that was right for COD and right for the community. The Homeland Security Education Center is a collective vision that was turned into a reality. This facility is a major jurisdictional training institution which houses the College of DuPage Criminal Justice Program the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy, the Fire Science, EMS, EMT training, and the Paralegal Program. And an uh, interesting fact for some of you, and some of you may be well aware of it, community colleges provide 80% of the training for first responders in our country. The College of DuPage will be training and preparing students to serve in surrounding communities to provide us with a safe and secure environment where we live and work. COD will provide, be providing the best training on legal continuum, from police being notified of an incident, to EMT, EMS providing life-saving care, to the criminal justice team who arrive on a crime scene to investigate, to the paralegal in the courtroom. 
COD and its excellent training will have been at every step along the way. Our due diligence in providing exceptional learning experience will have an impact on the successful execution of our legal system. Judge Bauer has been a part of this legal system for over 60 years. Integrity, civility, fair and just legal solutions. Thank you, Judge Bauer, for setting the bar so high. It's uh, also my pleasure to introduce some of the College of DuPage trustees that are with us this evening. Vice Chairman Aaron Burt, I believe is here. Uh, student trustee Olivia Martin, uh, trustee Nancy Svoboda, and trustee Joseph Wozniak. And at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, College of DuPage President, Dr. Robert Bruder. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a very warm welcome to all of you, and I hope this is not your first uh, visit to College of DuPage. If it is, a special welcome to you, uh, and certainly we hope that you'll come back often and enjoy this creation of yours. You might remember that you established College of DuPage in 1965 for the purpose of serving the community, and what better way to serve the community than this magnificent building that you're currently sitting in. I want to take a moment to thank the Foundation for coordinating this event tonight, a very special evening, to Hank Steinbrecher, who's our Chairman of the Foundation Board, and to the Foundation that works on our behalf to help tell the story and to help raise the money that we need to be able to provide the quality education that's offered uh, by this institution to some 30,000 students uh, in the fall alone. This, as you know, is the second largest uh, post-secondary educational institution in the state of Illinois. Only the University of Illinois is bigger, not better, just bigger. Uh, and so we take pride in the fact that we're not only of enormous size, but we also provide quality service. Well, this is an incredible evening tonight. It's not a promo uh, for the College of DuPage, but rather to pay homage to you and to thank you, Judge, for your illustrious career, for all that you've done for the legal profession, and for giving us the opportunity to be able to honor you and to connect your name uh, with the College of DuPage. What better way than to leave a legacy when 50 years from now, maybe 60 in your case, you're no longer with us. But what a great place to be able to identify your name and, and in your life's work and the things that you've done on behalf of so many people. Education, as we know, is the core of our existing. Teaching and learning is what it's all about. It's the single most important profession because all of us have been taught by someone and developed our cadre of knowledge. And so we're grateful to you for what you've done to your profession, but also to allow us to use your name. Uh, Homeland Security Education Center, uh, 60,000 square feet, $30 million, designed to teach first responders, those are people in law enforcement or in fire or an emergency medical technician, whether it's by natural disaster domestic or whether it's by foreign intervention over which we have no control. Regardless, it's to train people who will serve us to protect us, to keep us safe and secure in our homes and in our county and in our state. And so we're proud to have this building here and to make it available to the community. It's a first of its kind in the nation. We hope that you're proud of it. And again, delighted that the judge would allow us to be able to affiliate ourselves with him. Uh, those of you in the legal profession know him better than I, but you would smile when I would tell you that when the name came to me that we should be able to honor the judge by putting his name on the courtroom, and we approached him, what do you think he would do? Uh, before he aligns himself and commits to and associates with, he would want to come see it. So well before the building was done, the judge was kind enough to come over uh, and walk through an unfinished building and be able to see firsthand what it is that we're doing and what we have in mind and what we hope to accomplish. And only after an extended tour and a great deal of conversation and a lot of Q&A did the judge say, well, I'm going to go home and talk to Pat, but I'm leaning in the direction of you allowing me to go ahead and honor me at the College of DuPage. I think that speaks volumes of him, who he is as a person, to make sure that in the final analysis, his good name is going to be connected to only good. And we know College of DuPage is good, and he's great, and so that's why the marriage is one that's absolutely perfect. This courtroom will be used to help effect teaching and learning in our paralegal program and our criminal justice program 
provide seminars and continuing education, as well as other opportunities to be able to communicate knowledge to those people who have a thirst for it and for an interest in it. And again, we're pleased to be able to have the judge's name with it. So as I turn this over to the next part of it, and we're gonna show a beautiful clip of the judge and his career, let me make one personal observation if I can. It seems to me that now when I'm 67 years old and I look back over my lifetime, I think what is it that, that all of us would most want to have? And I'm sure you could sit down and you could tick it off on a yellow pad in terms of what would be priority for you, but among the many that sit for me is, I would have always loved to have had my avocation and my vocation be one and the same that my passion in life, the thing that I like to do, that I like to have fun with and enjoy and just benefit with my avocation, it's not something I have to do, it's something I want to do, would line up perfectly with my vocation, the means by which I earn my living, I earn my income, I take care of my family. And Judge, knowing you as little as I do, uh, you have lined it up perfectly where your avocation and your vocation are one and the same. Your love for the law, your love for the legal profession, your passion for it uh, is lined up beautifully with your ability to execute and to render service and to discharge the important duties and responsibilities which are given to you uh, by our government and by the people and uh, you're blessed to have achieved something that I'm close to it, uh, but, but you have the penultimate accomplishment in that regard, and we're so grateful that uh, you're alive and you've done so much for this community and for your profession. So before I have a gift for the, for the judge, he doesn't know that we have this, and I'll ask my good friend Dan Cronin to come up and with me. Let's take a quick look at a clip here in terms of the judge's life and some of the things that he's done uh, in the field that he has blessed us with for more than 60 years. I think Judge Bauer really represents the real proud, rich history of DuPage County. I think it's terrific that this facility uh, bears Judge Bauer's name because what it's doing is honoring a very special jurist. He is somebody who takes being a judge very, very seriously. He's also somebody who doesn't take himself very seriously. That could well be one of the greatest lessons that I learned from him. He really has developed a unique and a remarkable reputation as someone who you can go and seek counsel from. You'd be hard pressed to find any other judge in America on the federal bench today whose breadth of experience was as broad and as deep as Bill Bowers. The Honorable William J. Bauer of the Seventh Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals has enjoyed a distinguished legal career, one that has spanned 60 years. After two years service in the Army, Judge Bauer enrolled at Elmhurst College in 1947, graduated, then went on to earn his J.D. from DePaul University College of Law in 1952. His career began as a local prosecutor and after serving as state's attorney and as a DuPage County Circuit Court judge, Bauer earned his first of two federal appointments. In 1971, President Richard Nixon named him for a seat on the district court. Three years later, President Gerald Ford appointed him to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. He served as chief judge in the Seventh Circuit from 1986 to 1993 and assumed senior status in 1994. Judge Bauer continues to manage an active caseload. It is enjoyable to exercise your mind, you stay up to date on things, and you meet people constantly and learn new problems. As long as I think that I'm making a contribution, and I rely on my brothers and sisters of the bench and the lawyers to tell me when that stops, I'm willing to come and do it. I still look forward to coming to work every day. Perhaps one of the most inspiring aspects of Judge Bauer's dedication to his profession is his commitment to higher education and his belief in the value of mentoring. The spirit of education, achievement, and professional growth were embodied by Judge Bauer's ability to recognize young talent and groom them for success. 
The most remarkable part of his commitment to education has been um, his mentoring. Uh, he's famous for mentoring young people, maybe people that aren't so young, but people who are interested in public service. I consider the single most significant day of my career the day I walked across his threshold. I learned everything I needed to know about being a gentleman from my father. I learned about being a gentleman in the law from Bill Bauer. My wife, after we've been married 10 years, went to law school. Our three daughters have gone to law school. All of them have clerked for Bill Bauer. And frankly, we've talked over once or twice about how uh, would it be some value for the girls to go clerk for somebody else or to get that exposure someplace else? And the answer keeps coming back, no. Because the education you can get about being a lawyer in today's world and a sense of how the law has become what it is today from when he started is worth it. I think it's important for those of us in the legal community, those judges who we look up to and respect are those who ask questions in a very respectful and civil way. And Judge Bauer, of all people, sort of serves as a symbol uh, an example of that throughout his career and I think it's something that we all aspire to in the profession. Throughout my career uh, he's always remembered me, he's always had a warm handshake in anything I've seen him at and uh, he was one of my sort of first supporters in that way so when I learned that they were uh, seeking sponsors in connection with the College of DuPage courtroom I was uh, more than happy to be one of the sponsors. In the spring of 2010, College of DuPage broke ground on one of its most ambitious construction projects, the Homeland Security Education Center. The HEC houses COD's criminal justice and fire science programs, as well as the COD Police Department and the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy. This building is a unique space and resource where theory and practice converge under one roof. From paramedic to paralegal, Students learning at the HEC take advantage of unparalleled hands-on training that goes far above and beyond the traditional classroom setting. It is equipped with state-of-the-art instruction amenities, including a full-scale immersive street scene, forensics and cyber crime labs, a high-tech command center, and this mock courtroom. The mock courtroom at College of DuPage includes a witness stand, judges' chambers, a jury box, and reconfigurable seating arrangements for prosecutors and defense attorneys. This space is dedicated to a man whose career of distinction is characterized by a love of the law, a commitment to education, and a deep-rooted connection to DuPage County. The Honorable William J. Bauer. The most important of all our professions is teaching. The other professions teach the next generation but they're teaching while they're practicing. Lawyers, doctors, ministers, pick a number. You learn, you teach the next generation, you go on using your skills in two areas to do what you're trained to do, plus teach the next generation. never has forgotten his roots. Um, he is a very grounded man, um, yet he has maintained such a high level of success. Um, his self-effacing humor uh, is, is well known, but he's a warm and generous man. And I think that he likes people, um, even though he, I think he likes most people. Uh, but. I, I really think he has that unique quality of uh, intellect, of, of um, the ability to, to be able to express thoughts and ideas and viewpoints that, that the common man uh, thinks of from time to time, yet he's a leader. It's well known that he is the sage of DuPage, but my connection with him and uh, what I really cherish is that he's from the neighborhood, He's an Immaculate Conception High School graduate. He's an Elmhurst College graduate. Uh, 
fellow state's attorney, U.S. attorney, district judge, U.S. Court of Appeals. But frankly, on behalf of the DuPage County Board and on behalf of all the citizens of DuPage County, we couldn't be more proud of you. You are DuPage's very own. Thank you and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to thank all the law firms that have supported the Judge Bauer courtroom. Because Judge Bauer is such a believer in educating future generations, it is only fitting to announce that the funds raised on behalf of this campaign are being earmarked to endow a scholarship in Judge Bauer's name. The foundation, in conjunction with volunteers supporting the endowment, will be reaching out to raise funds necessary to enable us to complete this project with the intent of offering a student pursuing a career in the legal community, a scholarship in the spring of 2013. Judge Bauer, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to raise scholarship funds to help others in perpetuity for generations to come. At this moment, I'd like to ask Judge Bauer, Dr. Bruder, David Carlin, and Dan Cronin to come forward for a special gift presentation. Time for a little levity. <laughs> Is there a better quaffed judge on the bench than this gentleman? <laughs> he made me change my standards to be able to adapt. There's only one mistake in the video and only one mistake uh, in the remarks uh, made by Dan Cronin. He never graduated from Elmhurst College. It was the College of DuPage. We own him. <laughs> and judge, I too think you're a good man. So that if ever I'm in your court, I want you to remember I said that I think you're a good man. <laughs> All kidding aside, we have several gifts, uh, one of which we understand the judge every now and again, his knees hurt a little bit, his back hurts a little bit, he's complaining of a little arthritis, you know, you could have a headache because it was a bad day in the courtroom. So like the rest of us, he likes a little nip once in a while. So we understand he likes to nip. <laughs> Glenn Fittage, 18 year old, Scotch. So here we go, Judge. Here's here. gift number one. Right here, Judge. There he is. Look at that. <laughs> no one's going to get that baby out of his arms. <laughs> and then we also have an uh, appropriate plaque honoring this evening for the Judge, something that I hope he hangs. Uh, in his home or in his chambers, wherever he thinks is most appropriate, but it's a way to affirm the splendid uh, thing that's happening here tonight to honor just a great judge. Judge? That's beautiful. Judge, uh, please. I get to say something? I had no idea how good I was, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody ought to get something like this in his old age. It bolsters, bolsters up a little. I also want to thank the county board uh, to show that they do not harbor, harbor ill feelings. In 1959, I sued them all. <laughs> Successfully. <laughs> uh, it, it was a different board, of course. They, uh, uh, I am hard pressed to say how pleased I am with this. I think one of the reasons I was anxious to get, have it get started was I anticipated what will happen in Chicago next month when we will have need of everybody who is trained in law, <laughs> in terrorist tactics. I myself am going to New York. <laughs> I started in the law business because I thought it was a lovely way to make a living without really doing anything. <laughs> really, if you go, I learned about law from going to movies. And I saw lawyers, and they were always well-dressed. This is during the Depression. They were well-dressed. They were taken care of. They were treated with respect. And as near as I could tell, they didn't do anything. <laughs> they talked. And I thought, hell, I can do that. 
In the many years that have passed since then, I have not changed my mind an iota. <laughs> but I did find out something else, too. It is the foundation for everything else we have in the United States that's good. To those of you who think that the law profession and the lawyers have not contributed much, let me let you reflect on a couple of things. The first thing is we are the freest nation in the history of the world. We also have more lawyers per square inch than any nation in the world. Now, those are not a coincidence. This is the only nation in the world that was talked into existence. It was our professional ancestors, we lawyers, professional hood, professional ancestors that drafted the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and an Illinois lawyer who drafted the Emancipation Proclamation. The country has not always lived up to the ideals we set, but we keep striving for it. And every single piece of freedom we have gotten, every advancement in freedom, and every advancement for hope for the humanity has been because some courageous lawyers stood before a courageous judge and insisted the Constitution mean what it says, that we are all entitled to the rights of citizenship, to freedom of religion, of speech, and all the other things that go with the constitutional rights. Sometimes it takes years and sometimes a civil war to produce things. But most of the time what it just takes is what took to start the revolution. Talk, talk, read, teach, and make sure that people know what freedom means and hope and fight, they fight for it. I'm not taking anything away from these soldiers who fought in the Revolutionary War but their great moments were just to be there. They retreated at Bunker Hill. They retreated at Dorchester Heights. Uh, they didn't starve to death in Valley Forge, but they stayed there, and they stayed there because lawyers talked them into believing freedom, believing in it. And then after the war was over, and they had a successful conclusion to the revolution, they turned to the lawyers to create the Constitution and this nation. And they're still doing it. And we're still doing it. We are. So, I am proud to be a member of this profession. I am proud to have made what small contribution I could make on a day-to-day -day basis. I did a lot of pro bono work when I was a lawyer, but not intentionally. <laughs> but someplace early on in my career, I decided that I could either strive to do something I really, really like to do, and that was make a contribution as a public servant or aspire to make money. Uh, nothing against my friends who made money. Thank God they did. You witness some of the list of people who did make money. But there can be no greater satisfaction than I have had after 61 years of practicing in a profession I think is wonderful being surrounded by people who love me, or at least say they do. <laughs> I'm willing to concede most of them do. And there was one hook, I do like people. It is almost universally true I like people. I do not like people who hurt other people. I do not like people who are mean, and I do not like people who do not live up to their obligations. But I feel sorry for them, and I pity them, and I wish they could swap places with me for a minute and they'd realize how wasted their life was. Anyhow, thank you very much, all of you, just for being here, for helping me, and for the love you expressed for me. And as a general thing, I will tell you, I love you all. There's not a mean person in the room. God bless you, and thank you very, very much. What a special program tonight. Integrity, civility, fair, just legal solutions, obviously a keen sense of humor, above all, a gentleman. Judge Bauer, you are a pillar of our community, a role model, a leader, a mentor, and a friend to so very many people. May each of us in this room aspire to be more like you and the fine example that you've set for us all. Thank you, and God bless you.